summary of Boomi is we made um, we made as many mistakes as we did successes, and maybe everybody does that, and they just don't like to share the mistakes. But I like sharing the mistakes because uh, it reminds me not to ever do them again. But also, hopefully, it can help other startups to not fall down those paths. You know, I'd say for one thing, at the macro level, you know, we talk about Boomi a lot as being kind of two startups in one, one that failed and one that worked. Boomi 1.0 failed. Boomi 2.0 worked. And Boomi 1.0 was creating this integration product in a market where there were a hundred other integration products. And we were not able to articulate uh, what made our product different and unique in the market to capture appropriate attention. We were competing against companies that had crazy venture-backed um, teams and huge marketing budgets. You know, I'll never forget, we started in March of 2000, and in November of 2000, Microsoft announced BizTalk, which if you read it, you'd be like, oh, that sounds a lot like Boomi. And we're like, oh, shit, well, you know, now we're competing with Microsoft, so that's, that's not good. Um, and so on it went. Um, and then Boomi 2.0 was a restart of the business, restart of the product, and was all focused around as the world moves to cloud, and that was our big bet, you know, we're going to move from this world of on-premise to this world of cloud. When that happens, the way that you solve integration will fundamentally change. So we made the big bet uh, with Boomi, with the, the, the next chapter of Boomi, Boomi 2.0, we made a big bet fundamentally that... Um, the world, the world was going to move to cloud, that we weren't going to install software anymore. We were just going to consume it via the web uh, at the most simplest, and um, that that was going to fundamentally change how you connect all these apps up and how you move data between all these applications. And so we said, all right, let's throw away the old product and build a brand new one with that construct in mind and design it with that assumption in mind. So that's what we did. And we went from a market of 100 competitors to a market with three competitors. And the other three guys that we competed with had didn't do what we did. They had on-premise stuff. They had meaning, you know, software you install. It was built for the old world. It wasn't built for the new world. And we were, could very effectively deposition it in sales cycles. And so that, that was great. Um, and, um, and totally set our company on a different trajectory. My macro lesson there is that, again, something permanently ingrained into my head is uh, the criticality of being unique and different and being able to communicate what makes you unique and different in English, in as few words as possible, um, and, and such that it's impactful to the person you're telling it to. You know? and, and it's super hard to do that, but um, don't think that because it's hard, you shouldn't spend a ton of time figuring it out and getting it right, testing it all the time. Um, so definitely got very, very um, emphatic about that. <laughs>